Well, here we are at the official website for Dr. Scott McQuaid. Along the top there it says, join Dr. McQuaid's inner circle at a discount by clicking here. And this area down here in gray says, receive all of Dr. McQuaid's works for a very special price. For a limited time, you can own the entire collection of Dr. McQuaid's fascinating and highly acclaimed works in either paper bond or electronic format for a very special price. Along with this body of unrivaled research, you will receive some very nice bonuses. But hurry, because this deal will not last, and these works are not available from any other source. Just click the button below now to learn more, and to have these riveting works shipped to you right away. I myself am not interested in buying anything from this fellow. So let's take a look at Matthew 10.5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And we know that Judas betrayed him in exchange for money, like so many others do also. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? Not freely. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Okay, back again to Scott's nonsense video. Like Scott McQuaid, who comes in his own name. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. But there are false teachers, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? 
God forbid! How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? It doesn't look like Paul was looking for a license to sin. For the wages of sin is death. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So it looks like Paul agreed with Moses about a certain abomination. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. All right. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. So did Christ transgress the law by not keeping the fourth Old Testament commandment? No, he did not. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So understand that the reason why Christ did not keep their form of Sabbath is because the Ten Commandments are the Old Covenant. Like it says here, the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And Christ is the mediator of the new covenant. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me, and break my covenant, which I have made with them. And I know that a lot of you have heard me say these things many times before. But right now I'm dumping these truths on McQuaid, the bookseller merchant of the earth. So Moses said this people would rise up and go a whoring after other gods and break covenant. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father and prospered and all Israel obeyed him. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. This is the first commandment in Exodus 20 of the Old Testament, that Solomon, who all Israel obeyed, did break which caused the old covenant to be broken. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxen fat, 
Then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination, which they go about even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day, and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge, and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them. And I will be with thee. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law, and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. And when Solomon brought up the ark of the covenant out of the city of his daddy, the contents were revealed in 1 Kings chapter 8. But there was no mention of that law witness against him there. Go figure. So Scott, take this book of law and change not one jot or tittle for us, okay? It's the Torah law that most Paul slanderers don't like to hear about. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. So, Moses let us know that the law would change by the breaking of the old covenant that the children of Israel would not keep. And that's why Moses wrote a new song, as it were, Witness Against Them. Does that change one jot or tittle of what Moses in the law wrote? If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Now back to McQuaid's ridiculous argument. Now Paul, who McQuaid can't hear, writes, For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief corner stone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction, 